what you just saw was the courtesan singing and dancing in praise of the emperor krishna devaraya just before she narrates the story of mandodari mandodari free willed maybe educated bright buoyant energetic by some turn of events has turned into a frog so she was confined to a pond but she did not give up she lay afloat she remained afloat for many years till through another turn of events she turned into a woman again this time she was very beautiful but something had changed she was tamer docile something had changed about the society around her too she didn't feel the same power that she had before she turned into the frog before she figured out what she was what was happening in society itself came ravana ravana the powerful patriarch the connoisseur the expert at arts came in and identified the spark in mandodari and decided to own her so mandodari is now morphed into a patibrata the very illustrious virtuous wife and take to lanka to remain in the confines of lanka let's think of mandodari as we talk about the devadas my father says that i declared that i would be dancing when i was about 3 years old i don't really know about that but i know that they were taken aback and they still looked for good dance teachers in the city when i was around 6 my mother found out that dr venpati chinasatyam the doyen of kuchipudi dance form itself had started an institute in hyderabad and they enrolled me in the institute do master garu as we address venpati chinasatyam master was always around we were taught by sita teacher sita mahalakshmi and shobha teacher shobha naidu teacher as i address shobha naidu did not come from the devadasi families she did not even come from the upper caste brahmin families but her name is synonymous with my dance and with kuchipudi itself i would watch her perform i was in love with kuchipudi i still am so i would watch her perform every day sneaking into her rehearsal space when i was around 17 this body started asking me questions silently so when teacher did kalikitanamu kalikitanamu meaning femininity so when she did kalikitanamu with her chest raised and eyes closed and shoulders raised did she realize that she did not have to do this because she was naturally feminine this question was to be answered a little later funnily through the performance of the form itself this was around the time when i started getting a few compliments people would come and say you are very beautiful people from your families women from your families are beautiful you are very devout devotion runs in your family so i thought these were traits of everybody in general i went back to my parents and asked them what all this meant and my mother said with a stoic face we belong to the families of the devadasis called kalavantulu it seems they used to dance in the temple at one time we don't know anything about it but we know that we lost all respect later so we don't talk about it instead we call ourselves naidus i was very excited much to the dismay of my parents but i said why are we not celebrating the fact that we come from an artist family because we are equated to prostitutes said my mother i was very angry i was angry because our art has been robbed from us somebody has forcefully stripped us of our identity as artists i refused to camouflage my identity i am a kalavantulu woman and i remain so eventually let me tell you a little bit 
let me try a linear narration of the very complex story of the Devadasi. You must wonder what these terms Devadasi and Kadavantulu are. Devadasi literally means servant of God. Kalavantulu is the term given to the Devadasis of the Telugu speaking areas. So we will, since I come from the families of the Kalavantulu, but the term Devadasi is a little more broad, we will talk about the Devadasi in this talk. So she was the woman who was committed to the temple and the court. At the temple, she performed all the chores like cleaning, extracting sandal paste, making garlands, making unguins, singing and dancing. She was also at the court where she danced. She was very, very educated. Probably the only educated woman of the times was the Devadasi. So she had to answer questions which were very profound at that time. How did she survive? What was her source of income? She was given lands and gifts by the king, the patron. She did not own them, but she was a custodian of them, which means she enjoyed the produce of the land and she survived on it along with her family. When she was about to retire, she would prepare another student, another dancer, who could have been from her own blood or her relatives or from outside the families or by adoption. But the lineage of dancing continues. Then the lands are transferred to the next dancer and she takes care of the family. So essentially, this unmarried woman, the Devadasi was unmarried, but had a patron in the king or any of the other patrons who had a flair for art itself. This unmarried Devadasi was the head of the family. She was the breadwinner of the family. So we take a quantum jump where the king was the patron and the zamindar later during part of the colonial period was the patron. Colonialism. So when the colonizers came in, they told all of us that our gods were pagan gods, animal gods, our customs were all uncouth, our traditions were uncouth. Who respects a woman, an unmarried woman at that and who dances in public? No, the man should take charge. This was told to all of us and the men believed it. It was convenient, right? So then we had the man saying no to dance. Now the Devadasi is looked at variously. There was a group which looked at her as a supernatural woman akin to the goddess. There were others who looked at an ultra-chaste woman who was married to God. There was another group who thought, this is a professional singer-dancer. There was another group who said, since she is unmarried and yet has patrons, she uses her sexuality as a tool to break families. And there was another group which said she was a witch. Alongside this, there were reforms that came into play. This was around the late 19th century and the earlier 20th century. These reforms took it upon themselves to cleanse the world, to cleanse the country of these women, fallen women. And acts like the Devadasi Prevention of Dedication Act 1947 and the anti notch Act which came even earlier did work towards the disappearance of this woman. Did she really change? Did she really disappear? Yes and no. Because the Act said any woman who danced from within these families would be considered a prostitute. Now we are talking about a time period when prostitution was considered very, very fallen and negative in energy. So this lady, these women were stopped from dancing 
in temples, courts, marriages, festivals, all of us dance in Bharats. Everybody else could dance but not these women from the families who were born for singing and dancing were forbidden from dancing. And if they did, they were looked at as fallen women and they were banished from society. Now this woman, the Devadasi, is stripped of her agency, her identity, her economy. What happens to her? Who is she in society? She didn't have an identity till the Indian government came in and formed a caste called Devadasi under which all unmarried women, whether they were artists or not, all unmarried women were casted under the term Devadasi. So at this time, there was a rush to change identity. The families tried to change their identity. They did not give up, mind you. They didn't kill themselves. But they changed their identity by getting themselves registered as a different caste, changing religion, taking up Christianity, rejecting religion, going for freedom struggle because there, there is no mention of any caste in the freedom struggle. They also formed different groups of male-dominated castes where the women were from the Devadasi families but did not dance. They even took up the Brahmanic way of life to camouflage who they are so that people don't point out and say, you are very beautiful, people, women from your families are beautiful. So they changed identity. It was necessary for them to be a part of the society. So what happened to her? Did she really disappear? No, but she exists in different ways. Much like Mandodari when she turned into the frog. <laughs> Alongside this reform, these reformists who came in and worked very hard to erase the Devadasi, there was a quick, fast attempt to build the neoclassical dances. So the dances that you know as Bharatanatyam, Kuchipuri, Odissi, Kathak, they were the forms that were quickly made as a reflection of what the Devadasi danced. Why was this necessary? The woman was there, the dance was there. Why was it necessary to create another dance form that did not have this woman dancing, but somebody else dancing. Because that was about the time, then the nationalist period, around the 1920s. That was the time when we were moving towards independence and the image of the country had to be spiritual, culturally rich. And the source of this culture, rich culture, could not be said it is a woman and a lower caste woman at that and an unmarried woman. So the art was plucked out of the dancers of the Devadasis and placed on upper caste dancers. Now we have these upper caste dancers who are all very beautiful. Something changed, right? They're all very beautiful and they dance the dance of the Devadasis. 
but only a reflection of it. What happened to the Devadasi in the meantime? As she changed her identity, she built herself in a different mold. She started redoing herself. Something about her changed. Let's see what happened. <laughs> That buoyancy and energy about her is not seen anymore. Today, when you see our families, you will see that they are completely removed from the dance. They do not connect with the dance. But the need is to be married and be a good housewife. You can work. Please work if your husband wants you to. But make sure you're a good housewife. This is what I was told to. And my family was thrilled that I was getting married to a Thakur family, an upper caste Thakur family. So they were very happy. What happened to the dancers of today who are not from the families but from outside the families? They're dancing, a shade of what the Devadasis do. The space they dance in is the Sabha where which is organized by the upper class, upper caste, male connoisseurs who know the art, who appreciate the art and preserve it in their mold and their archive. So these dancers, still women, are in a world of patriarchy. Were we talking about Mandodari being very beautiful and taken to Lanka? My father, Seshagiri Rao, is born to his mother. His, fa his father was a Madhva Brahmin and Nanama, his mother, years younger than his father, took care of him all his life. She was from the Kalavantulu family and she herself had 10 children from him. But Nanama herself, Surya Kantan, she came from the families that served the Varaha Narasimha Swami temple in Simhachalam. They extracted sandal paste and so the name Chinagandham, small sandalwood paste, is our family name. My mother's mother, my maternal grandmother, is the daughter of two exemplary singer dancers, Madhuravani and her sister Pichayama. They were patronized by the temple dharmakarta of An Annavaram. So here I am with the lineage of the Kadavantulu blood, the Zamindari blood and the Brahmin upper caste elitist blood. In this situation, I wanted to look for these women from my own families and I went in search of them when I found my guru, Annabatula Mangatayar. She is the granddaughter of the exemplary Bulibenkar Ratnama. And she very lovingly hands over 
her repertoire to me. We from the Kalavantulu families, from the Devadasi families, have been tamed and normalized. We are tamer and more proper than other women. We are married to whom it really doesn't matter. We are married and that's all matters. The story of the Devadasi or the Kalavantulu is a story, it's a lesson in art, aesthetics, resilience and humanity, humanism itself. It is the story of a female dancing body. It's the story of this woman who struggles to claim her identity as a woman, as a dancer and as a performer as she has achieved it with commitment and struggle. It is her story of dance. Thank <laughs> you.